இந்த கிரகண சமயம் ரொம்ப விசேஷமான சமயம் சொல்லுவோம் ஸ்பிரிச்சுவல் சாதன சமயம் ஸோ இப்போ நம்ம என்ன செய்ய போகிறோம் கேட்டால் ஒரு அரை மணி நேரம் ஹாஃப் அன் ஹவர் வி ஆர் கோயிங் டு டூ ஜபா அண்ட் தியான் வாட் ஜபா வி ஆர் கோயிங் டு யூனோ அசங்கோ தட் இஸ் ரியல் ஜபா ஆனால் நீங்கள் என்ன ஆகுதுன்னு எனக்கு தெரியாது ஏன்னா கிரகண சமீபம் எது ஜபம் பண்ணுறோமோ அது ஆயிரம் மடங்கு பழம் கொடுக்கணும் ஸோ அசங்கோகம் அசங்கோகம் சொல்லி ஜபம் பண்ண வச்சுப்பேன் வாட் இல் ஹேப்பன் டு அஸ் இட் பிகம் ரியலி அசங்கா இப்போ நாலஞ்சு கிளாஸ்க்கு வர மாட்டீங்க யார் that is the way to keep you all away <laughs> if we can instill the spirit of asango then everything will be all right and i should instill myself also na தலைகுனி சிலையன வைத்த 
தலைவனான் வலைமான் தனைகராது என் தளர்வின் கழிவு நாடிடுவா தலைவனாமருணா சலவுளம் ஏதோ தமியனாத்தனை உணர்வற்கே தற்பர நாளும் தாழினில் தங்கி தண்டல மண்டுமரமானே சிற்பதனத்தே உன்மலரழியா செய்திடில் உயிரி உண்டுந்தன் நட்பத போதில் நானுயில் விட்டால் நட்டதூனாதும் உன் பழியே வெப்புரு அருண விரிகதில் ஒழியே நுண்ணருள் வெளியே வெளி வழி தீனீர் மண்பல உயிரால் விரிவுறு பூத பௌதிகங்கள் வெடியொழி உன்னை அன்றியின் வேறு யானாருடன் வெளியதாயுழத்து வேற விளங்கின் வேறன வெளிவருவேனா வெளிவராயருணா சல அவன் தலையில் விரிமலர் பதத்தினை வைத்தே வைத்தனை வாழா வையகத்துய்யும் வழியறி மதியழித்திங்கன் வைத்திரில்லாக்கும் இன்பிலை துன்பே வாழ்வில் சாவதே மாண்பா வைத்தியம் பற்றி பயனரு எனக்கு உன் பதமுரு அருமருந்தருள்வா பைத்திய மருந்தா பாரொழில் அருண அருப்பத முரு பெரு பரனே பரமனின் பாதம் பற்றறப்பற்றும் பரரி அரியரி பரமன் பரமுனக்கெனயன் பணியர பணியாய் பரித்திடும் உனக்கெது பாரம் பரமனில் பிரிந்து உலகினை தலையில் பற்றியான் பெற்றது போதும் பரமனாமருணா சலையனையும் பதத்தினின்றது குறப்பாரே பரமனாமருணா சலையனை நின்றொரு குறப்பாரே பார்த்தனன் புதுமை உயிர்வலி காந்த பருவதம் ஒருதனம் இதனை ஓத்திடும் உயிரின் சேட்டையை ஒடுக்கி ஒருதன தவிமுகமாக ஈத்ததை தன் போல் அசலமா செய்த இன்னுயில் பலிகொடும் மிகுது என் ஓர் துயின் உயிர்காள் உளமதில் ஒளிரில் உயிர்கொலி அருணமாகிரியே கிரிது பரமா கருதிய என்போ கெட்டவர் எத்தனை கொல்லோ விரிதுயராளி பிழைப்பினில் விளைவு விட்டுடல் விட்டிட விறகு கருதியே திரிவி கருத்தினுள் ஒரு கால் கருதிடக் கொலாமலே கொல்லும் அருமருந்தொன்றுண்டு அருமருந்தொன்றுண்டு அவனியில் அதுதான் அருணமா திறமென கொண்டாயனக்கோ குறையுண்டோ 
chant sangoham sangoham so i request the drama to chant and we all will lead we all will follow and uh, meanwhile i would be sitting quiet in meditation in dhyana i just want to tell you one more thing when a sadhu when he sits in dhyana one with his self that sannidhana become becomes very very vibrant very wonderful sannidhana it becomes you know it is like a child sleeping at the mother's lap the child will not think about anything the child will feel very secure very blissful so the sannidhana of a sadhu is like mother's lap so you need not do anything see when you are sleeping in your mother's lap do you want to do anything you just want to bask in the beauty and security and the glory of the whole thing right so you need not do anything you just chant asango and try to bask in the peace in the auspicious sanghana right Oh. 
senses only we recognize the sense objects. So, I am not attached to any of the objects. And then we say, whatever may be the emotions in the mind, I am not attached to any of the emotions, good or bad. Why? I am asanga. By nature, I am not attached to any of these things, the mind and the emotions. And even I am not attached to the intellect and different ideas, concepts, thoughts. So when you can maintain this bhava, so 
absolutely I am unattached. Asangaha aham, asangaha aham, asangaha Then there comes a state where your mind quietens, not disturbed by anything. And there you realize your true self as Satchidhananda Swaroop. That is what we are asserting. Satchidhananda Rupoham. I am of the nature of pure existence. Yirupu Matiram. Just I am. And the pure knowledge. I know I am. And that is really this. That is called as Satchidhananda. In that state, aham eva, I alone am, there is nothing other than me. The idea of he, she, it, everything vanishes there. That is only the pure self. Aham eva, aham abhyayaha means that pure self is indestructible. Meaning, even when the body withers away, drops dead, Still, that Atma, the Self, never dies. Whatever happens to the physical body or the mind, even to the intellect, the Atma, the Self, is the same. Nothing happens to it. So this is what we have to contemplate. We have to meditate on. So this is the most beautiful way to meditate and to transcend the body mind. Right? Okay. So today we are going to see what are all the initial adjustments required to soar in meditation. See, Murugana Swami, that is Bhagavan Sri Ramana Maharishi's. Atyanta Shishya, the disciple, Sri Murugana Swami he used to say, before you start the spiritual journey, one thing you have to understand, that you have to follow the path of Dharma. He always used to say, only a person who is following the path of dharma can sit for meditation or try to pursue this path of the absolute truth. Why? Because only when you follow your dharma, there are no conflicts in your mind. You understand what I am saying? When we follow the path of dharma, there is always a conflict in the mind. Whether have I done the right thing or not, or whether I am incurring sin, <coughs> what will happen to me, this kind of sanchala is always there. So, <coughs> the first and foremost thing is, one has to follow the path of Dharma. That is why Sri Yoga Swami also says, Dharma Neviki Sahade, like a grandfather advising to the grandchild, he says, Dharma Neri Kisahade. So first and foremost is we have to follow the path. According to our stage of life, if we are a brahmachari, there are certain dharmas. If we are grihasthas, there are certain dharmas. If we are vanapasi sannyasi, there are certain dharmas. We have to live according to our dharma. And also, according to varma means what? Brahmana, Kshatriya, Vaishya, Shudra. According to our innate tendencies, meaning Swadharma, they say. According to our Guna and Dharma, we are classified into four Varnas. So there are certain Dharmas for Brahmana, for, for Kshatriya, Vaishya, Shudra. So we have to follow those Dharmas. So the first and foremost thing is we have to follow the path. It is very, very important how we live the rest of our day. There is 23 and a half hours, let us say. Before we sit in the seat of meditation for half an hour. If you think, 
I may live whatever way I want to live. But if I sit in the seat of meditation, I just forget everything and I soar high. No, it will never happen. Only when we lead a very decent dharmic life in our day-to-day -day living, then we can hope to sit and have peace within ourselves. This is very important, which we should never forget. Dharmo rakshati rakshitaha, or Kanchi Kariva always used to say. One, when you protect dharma, dharma protects you from everything. So therefore, that is the first and foremost adjustment we need to do. See, this in Patanjali Yoga Sutra, it denotes yama niyama in general. If you want to know more about it, you please refer to Patanjali Yoga Sutra. There are five yamas and five niyamas in general. I am not going to elaborate on that. If you want more, you can refer to Patanjali Yoga Sutra. Number two, it is very important to have devotion to the Lord and devotion to one's teacher, Sadhguru. Without the devotion, it is very, very difficult to follow this path. Why? Because we do not know the goal and we are not sure of the path. And in fact, we are all alone. So therefore, the Parameshwara is there, the Lord, he is actually Atman the Self only. When he is functioning through the world, he is called the Vishwara, the Parameshwara. <coughs> so we should have devotion to the feet of the Lord. The same Lord comes as the Sadhguru. So we should have devotion to Sadhguru because he is showing the path. And ultimately, Ishwara or Sadhguru is Atma the Self only, the truth. Atma so even when we attend meditation, when we start for a minute or so, we have to quieten our mind and we should think either our Ishta Devata or our Sadhguru, our Guru or both. And we should surrender ourselves at his feet and Tell him, O oh Lord, I really don't know anything. You are my father, you are my mother, you are my bhandu, you are my sakha, and you are my everything. Please protect me. Please guide me. Take care of me and take care of everybody. So with this prayer only we should start meditation. You know why? Because when you progress in meditation, you get a lot of confusion doubts. You get fear and sometimes you get very impatient. So when you surrender to the Lord or the teacher, the teacher who is within, who is seated within your own heart, he will take care. See, I am not exaggerating at all. He is in our own heart, not as a form, as our true self. And he will protect us, he will guide us in the right path. If we have got a sincere attitude of surrender at his feet, he will take charge of our lives. So this is also very, very important before we start meditation. So whenever any doubts come, we are assured he is there with me. He is antaryami. He is watching everything. All our thoughts, all our motives behind the thoughts, all our actions he is watching from within. So he knows everything. So therefore, he can only guide us. He will guide. This assures he will not forsake me. He cannot afford to forsake me. So this we should have in our mind. And fear, whenever fear comes, no fear. Why? He is there with him. When he is protecting us, what harm can come to us? Like that, when you really feel 
that Sadhguru is within me, he is guiding me, he is protecting me, no harm will come to us. So no fear. So with this attitude of surrender, we should sit in the field of meditation. And number three, first of all we have to handle the grossest layer of our personality. That is the gross body. That is very important. That is why those days, they start very early in their lives. Because when you are young, everything is very flexible. But when you grow older and older, everything becomes stiff. Everything, the body, the mind, the ahankara gets crystallized. So, when you start early, that's a big advantage. Everything is flexible. So, it is advised by our Mahatmas that we should try to sit either in Siddhasana or in Padmasana. If not possible, in Sukhasana. These are the three postures recommended for Dhyana. But some traditional Mahatmas believe that lady should not sit in Siddhasana. Some traditional Mahatmas, they believe and they propagate that lady should not sit in Siddhasana. But they can sit in Padmasana or Ardha Padmasana. Your yoga teacher will teach you how to sit in Siddhasana, how to sit in Padmasana and Ardha Padmasana. Whatever. If you are not able to, don't worry, Sukhasana is fine. You know why? Patanjali Yoga Sutra is authority on all these subject matters. There, there are four chapters, I suppose, and our Acharya taught us Patanjali Yoga Sutra completely. And there, regarding asanas, there are only two sutras, nothing more than that. Can you believe? Can you imagine? The whole of the world is practicing asanas, asanas, asanas. But in whole of Patanjali Yoga Sutra, only only two asanas are devoted for us. Two shlokas are devoted for us. And there also, sukam stiram asanam. Full stop. Sukam means in which posture you can sit comfortably without sleeping. And for a long time. And stiram means firm. Not stiff. Firm. This is asana. Sukam stiram asana. Full stop. But a devotee asked Bhagavan Sri Ramana Maharishi, which is the right posture to sit in meditation? You know Bhagavan, he said, sit in your own self. That is the right posture. <laughs> he is like that. Sit in your own self. That is the right posture. You know, all these Mahatmas have really spoiled us and destroyed us. Our Gurudev used to say, We don't believe in twisting the body. We believe in only straightening the mind. See, our Gurudev, he initially he was in the ashram, Shivananji's ashram. In Shivananji's ashram, it's integrated yoga. All the yoga combined together. Karma yoga, Bhakti yoga, Ashta, Ashtanga yoga, or it's called Hatha yoga, whatever. And Jnana Yoga. But Gurudev was a brilliant person. He was more of a Jnani, Jnani and a Jnana oriented. So he used to go and play with those practicing uh, Shirshasanas. <laughs> he will disturb the people there, it seems, when they are practicing yoga. Then Shivanti thought, no, he is not fit here. So he sent him to Swami Tapon Mala. A Kathor Sanyasi. A great Tapasvi. And Great Nyan. He is called as Himavat Vibhuti, the glory of Himalayas. So, because of those training, somehow, our Prarabdha or whatever, <laughs> we are not too much into yoga, but still, it's very important to keep your body fit, to live a good life here, and also to perform your sadhana. Therefore, nowadays, I really recognize the value of basic yoga asana and pranayama. 
And for meditation especially, we should learn to sit in a proper posture. Sukham comfortably, stiram for long. Firm, firm, without shaking, without bending or without you know, that is important. Our Acharya has only indicated few tips for how to sit. I will share with you. Don't ask me Swami whether you are sitting that way, don't ask. <laughs> because when you sit in the self, everything is transcendent, body, mind, all pranas, everything is sorted out. So don't compare or don't, you know, point fingers. It is only for the beginners that I am talking. So Arachaji, he has given a beautiful, uh, certain beautiful tips. First of all, as Gita says, we have to sit straight only. The back, the neck and the head in one straight line, perpendicular to the ground. Don't ask, Swamiji, can't we just lie down and then meditate? So we have to sit on <laughs> <laughs> so we have to sit perpendicular to the ground. Huh? So our back, neck and head in straight line. And we should not now and then move our body. And then as Amma said today morning, our base should be broader to gain a stable equilibrium. If you are a student of science, you know, when the broad is baser, you get more stability. The equilibrium is more. Therefore, your legs should be folded properly in any of these asanas, Siddhasana or Padmasana or Sukhasana and it should be broader and firm so that the center of gravity it falls on the spine on the center of the body as amma pointed out today there are two pelvic bones so on which we have to we should try to sit so that the center of gravity is exactly on your center you gain that stability and you should not be stiff, you should relax. Not that our head should go like this, or we should swing. Some people when they study, you know, you stop them, they can't study. Because they have been used. So like Dhyana Mosri, you cannot do like this. But in Ramanashram, I have seen certain people, I don't know, they may have some problem, I don't know, I should not uh, make fun of them. That I have on my own sit like this in meditation. I tell you, one per person I have seen. You cannot, I don't know, very difficult if you can rotate your head like that and sit for meditation. For, you should not know. And you know, there are different mudras also. Chin mudra, or have you seen Vivekananda? He sits like this. Whichever way. Kaya was over chairing Panama. We know the name for every the Marit Chas of Sanda. Still a person of Patrick, I'm more cutting to a car of Padan Dave. Patrick, Patrick, I'm more a car than a hundred. Some children I have seen. Adamari Khan the Shesta Punu, Alpha Kaya or the Tlavik, Kal or the Tlavik, Vodam or the Tlavik. Popcorn subtail, young. So why would you know? <laughs> so we have to sit and relax. Amma Sundamadi, not stiff, relax. It is generally for beginners to close the eyes better. Eyes better. Because you get distracted. Eyes also gently close. <laughs> I will not see anything. Don't do that. Gently close the eyes. This is how we have to sit. You understand? And we should learn to sit for long. 
that is very important you gain asana siddhi they say asana siddhi means you lose the contours of your body meaning you lose the idea means the sense of your body that's all it will happen it doesn't happen also don't worry see those are all not important i tell you <laughs> and those who can't sit down can sit on the chair also so this is about asana sukham sthiram asana comfortable firm without shaking without bending forward or backward sit straight and before that we have to choose the right place that is also said in gita i am not going through those verses gita says ekantavasan as far as possible try to select a place where you are not disturbed you cannot go into a market place very busy market place katrika valaka vyavaram nadatha mena hopping in dhanam you can't sit that way. it's not possible at least to begin with that choose a very quiet place the best place for me is my own bed <laughs> i tell you some people have a weird notion if i go to himalayas if i go into the cave then only i can meditate i tell you you can never meditate <laughs> it is very cold there first of all if you go into the cave you are so scared first of all palm to the only there is human so your own house is best place if it is quiet it's wonderful but don't please go too close to the kitchen and sit ramma sambar sambar go in vengal sambar for body pandra or kai paathukka you should not sit in a place which has got intense odor or smell those things will distract so you have to select a quiet place decent place which is not too high or too low also in the cliff cliff hanger i will go and sit a shiva people have a weird idea you know like shiva you will have the fear that i will run the answer will run the answer will run the answer you will fall also don't try, try all those things sama dalathula nalla padu kanathu kullave dhyanam pandra and disturbance illa no to go also and the pressure will be different i don't know na try pannadhu kanathu kullave illa in a sama dalam you try sitting those days the mahatmas since they were sitting in the forest they used this kings uh, this deer skin because to avoid that the 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 the, 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 the dampening this thing to enter into your body to avoid that the ear of us will layer on deer skin not deer 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 india la deer deer man english literature can spell in deer d e a r d e r s kin puri samana la vetti tholu vechi aa sumela so what men or viri pivir chokaru no because to avoid that damn that means that is your system you know If dampness enters the system, the outside is wrong. You should not try all those things. Bhagwan, 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 B
and even Buddhist monks, they also are looking the same. Today morning I could not control my laughter, but still I was controlling. That's a different issue. Don't don't mistake me. But you know what? This pranayama is so simple. Just watch. Watch your breath. The idea is you should not try to enhance, hasten, or you should not try to slow down the breathing. You should breathe naturally, however it is, but watch. Ana Pana Satta, they say in Buddhist tradition. See, when I was in Sri Lanka, I used to go to the forest, those monasteries, as the monks they meditate. I lived with them for a few days and all. They teach me Sana Pana Satta. Meaning, you just watch the inhalation and exhalation. However it comes, let it come. However it goes, let it go. Watch. When you do so, the breathing becomes so shy. And readings become very regular. See, right? You know, Bhagavan Ramana she says, when you control the prana, the prana is uh, controlled, the mind also is controlled. Because the prana shakti and the uh, jnana shakti, which is the mind, they have got same root, which is atma, the self. From the atma, the self, only the prana shakti or the mano shakti or whatever, Everything comes comes out. When you, when you control one, the other thing is controlled. So prana, we have to watch the prana quietly for some time. Because when the mind is turbulent and agitated, you cannot sit for meditation. You cannot work on the mind. So for some time, if your mind is so turbulent, for some time, just watch the breath. Don't do anything. Just watch the breath. Let it go, let it come. Watch. After some time, the prana becomes so. Then we can start working with our mind. See, this is very important. Dhyana. See, other things Amma will teach you how to sit and how to take care of the prana. But our main subject matter is to handle the mind. So I will once again summarize. First thing, we should lead the life of Dharma. Yari yech kodayka kudadu, adhikma poi sulla kudadu, kadal seya kudadu, dalna seya kudadu. Dharma toda vada. That is the first and foremost. It is very important how you conduct yourself in the world before you sit for meditation. Second thing is, we should have devotion to the Lord and to the teacher. So for a minute, we have to surrender ourselves and then we should start the Dharma. The third thing is Sukham Stiram Asana. You should try to sit in one posture without shaking, without moving, not becoming very stiff, relaxing your body, keeping the leg, hands, everything in one place. And then watch the prana so that the prana becomes quiet. And then we can handle the mind one by one. See, the grossest layer is the body, and then comes the prana, and then comes the See, if you watch the mind, mind is nothing but flow of thoughts. Mind means what? Continuous flow of thoughts. Thoughts are flowing. Gurudev used to give this example of the river. When water is flowing continuously, it is called as river. Similarly, when thoughts are flowing, then you call that as mind. Gurudev says, whenever you sit for meditation, the mind gets distracted mind gets scattered in these three parameters parameters he says desha kala vastu if you watch whenever the mind gets distracted scattered it can go only into these three parameters desha kala vastu desha means what in space place let us say when you are sitting here Meditating, your mind goes to your house in Chennai or in Bangalore or wherever, in Melbourne. The mind goes there. Meaning what? It is not available here, but it is somewhere. 
Desha. Kala means what? When you are sitting now, in the present moment here, but mind goes to the past. When you are very young, or whatever happened few, few days back, it goes, or it goes into the future. Meaning it starts imagining so many wonderful things. They call it as wool gathering. Have you heard about the word wool gathering? They say, yeah, it thinks summa about certain things. But it is never in the present. You can realize yourself only now and here. Not in the future. Not there in Kashi or there in Rameshwaram or in Kailash. No. You can realize self now and here only. Why? Wherever you are, it is there, here. Whenever you realize it is now only. So therefore, we have to keep the mind in one place, now in the present moment, and in one vasu. Why so in one vasu? The nature of the mind is to jump like a monkey here, there, in so many vastus. Why do you want to keep the mind in one vastu always? Because whenever, whenever mind jumps here, there, everywhere, mind becomes weak. The energy is dissipated. The weak mind is a useless mind. It cannot achieve anything. If you focus the mind and gain the single point of attention, if you can keep the mind one thing, if you gain that strength, then the mind becomes powerful. You know why? The children don't listen to the mothers. You know why? Or the father. You know why? Because they don't have that strength within. The teachers sometimes, they shout. Keep silence! Keep silence! They shout. Amma, why can't you keep silence first? The teachers, you know. <laughs> Meaning what? You are unable to control because you have not learned to control your own mind. How can you control other minds? They are all minds only, you know, after all. So, when you don't have that power to control your own mind, to make it one-pointed, how can you control the other minds? How to help the other minds to focus? You can't. You cannot. So the weak mind is always a useless mind. The mind which has single point is powerful mind. So therefore, we have to make the mind single point. That is very important, at least initial. See, another thing, Gurudev gives this example of iron becoming a magnet. You know iron piece, there the molecules are oriented in different directions. So, uh, the, what they say, the field or whatever they say, no? which is generated, is all self-cancelled, the magnetic field. But when you take a magnet and when you rub it in one direction, all the molecules are oriented in one direction. So all the magnetic field, all the power is added up. So it becomes powerful, becomes a magnet. Similarly, when the mind is distracted, the mind's energy is dissipated, you cannot achieve anything in life. Not in the world, not in the other world. So through this meditation, when you can gather the rays of your mind, make it single pointed, then it becomes very powerful. Then you can achieve greatness. So my Vivekananda was Vivekananda. Why? Because his mind was so one, one point. All great people achieve greatness because of their focus. Focus means for ability to keep the mind where the hand is working. That is Gurudev's mantra. Keep the mind where your hands are working, at work. So this is to develop one pointedness. So therefore, we should learn to tie up this mind in one desh, one place. Where, where some, in the body, wherever you feel comfortable. Some people suggest Hridayam. Bhagavan suggests Hridayam. Some people suggest Dhruva or Madhyam. Yogis, they meditate here. Bro or Madhya. If you are not trained, don't try. 
you will develop headache. If you are trained properly, you, you try this. And some people, Nashika Gre, Gita says Nashika Gre means what? Just here, in front of your own nose, not others' nose. <laughs> Nashika Gre means the husband sitting and watching the wife, Nashika Gre. <laughs> tip of the nose, but your own tip of the <laughs> And also you should not <laughs> not that you have to properly pay for it. Just a place where the mind should be focused. It's not that you should see the tip on this. Please don't try all those funny things. And you become a cartoon of a sadhak. <laughs> so, in one place we have to type the mind. And now in the present moment, with one object. That is the name of the Lord or the mantras. The mantras are very powerful. Given by Varushis, they are very powerful. So when we can chant mantra and keep the mind on the sound of the mantra. See, there are different techniques. One is you remember the form of the Lord and chant mantra. That is one. But still further, I feel, instead of keeping the form, it is just to keep the mind on the sound of the mantra, it's very effective. Because when you try to see a form, forms have got so many dimensions, right? Rendu kanni, oru mooku, oru vai, rendu kai, rendu kal. Yenka poi paakran kriya. Pa Krishna Raram Chinna, Bala Krishna Raram. Dhanam Mandada. Illa Bhagavad Gita Gita Jagat Guru Krishna Jnana Mandala Illa Gopi Chodha Vrayanda Krishna Jnana Mandala Sandhya Hundi Teh Sandhya You get confused One Krishna means whether his head or feet So better to take a mantra and in the sound of the mantra I tell you we will not do anything Keep the mind on the sound So your mind becomes one point more the mind becomes one pointed, more the mind gains power. And then you become a, not only a powerful person, a very mature, balanced person. And not only that, and then you can work on the mind and transcend the mind. See, when you don't unify the mind, meaning bring the mind at one focus, you cannot work on it. When the mind is so turbulent, scattered everywhere, how can you work on the mind? Mind is first of all not available. So therefore, you have to purify it and unify it. Yesterday we saw that. So that is important. Swami Tapon Maharaj has said again and again the importance of gaining this ekagrata, single point attention. But Bhagavan Ramana Maharishi has not spoken too much about it. Bhagavan Ramana Maharishi's path is a little different. But traditional sannyasis like Swami Tapuvan Maharaj and great Shivananda, others, they have spoken so much about a chitta ekagrata, single point of attention. So the idea is what? Now we have to tie this mind in one desha, one place, in one kala, means the present tense. You should not become tense. You should become, you should tie the mind in the present moment. Now. And in one object, which is the mantra, the sound of the mantra. Which mantra should I take, Swamiji? <laughs> Whichever mantra you feel very inspired. It can differ from people to people. It also depends about uh, uh, your previous Janma Sadhana also. You take liking towards certain mantra because you have been practicing for so long. So if you are very inspired by Shiva, you can take Panchakshana. Or Krishna, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudeva. Or Sri Ram, Jai Ram, Jai Jai Ram. Sri Ram, Jai Ram, Jai Jai Ram. There are so many mantras given. Or Soham, Soham, Soham. Soham is Soham Atma. Sahaham, I am that. That also is a mantra. Soham mantra. 
Shivoham. Shivoham. Any mantra you can take. But only one mantra you can have. Not 15 mantras. When Amma was asking me from early childhood onwards, this guru initiated me to this mantra, that guru initiated me to that mantra. Now what mantra I should chant? How can I tell you? And the one who was in the Bali, இவர் வந்து வித்யா பாலா வித்யா என்ன சொல்றீங்க அவர் வந்து பாலியை கொடுத்துட்டு போனார் இவர் வந்து ஸ்ரீ வித்யாவை கொடுத்துட்டு போனார் என்ன செய்யறது போனா எனக்கு என்ன தெரியும் ஏதோ செஞ்சு முடிங்க பட் இட் இஸ் பெட்டர் டு டேக் ஒன் மந்திரா சி அவர் ப்ராப்ளம் யூனோ வாட் சம்டைம்ஸ் யூ ஃபீல் இந்த மந்திரம் பிரயோஜனம் போல இருக்கு அந்த மந்திரம் நல்லா இருக்கும் போல இருக்கு ப்ராக்டிஸ் பண்ணலாம் அவன் முகத்தில் எவ்வளோ தேஜஸ் பார்த்து நிறைய ஃபேரன் ஒளி போட்டு அவ்வளோதான் எவ்வளோ தேஜஸ் பார்த்து நானும் தான் இருக்கேன் இந்த மக்கள் மாதிரி இந்த மந்திரம் சரி ஏன் குருவே மந்திரம் சரி யூஸ்லெஸ் இதெல்லாம் சரி வராது நல்ல குருவை பார்த்து நல்ல மந்திரம் ஆயிடுது மிச்சவர் மந்திரம் சாங்ஷன் பை ரிஷிஸ் இன் ஒன் ஆஃப் த ஆர்கனைசேஷன் வென் ஐ வாஸ் வெரி வெரி யங் In, in our school, they came and they initiated us. Initiated me chumma. They gave me a mantra. You say that you chant this. When I was very young. What is the mantra? Ima. I should not tell this out. He said. You should not tell this out. But I am telling you now. Ima. He said. What? Uma? No, Ima. <laughs> what Ima? No, no. Ima he chant. What is this? No, no. Ima he chant. Ima, 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 Ima. <laughs> ரிஷி <laughs> 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 the seers chumma tom dickel harry cannot come and give some mantra i don't want to use this it is a serious picture but something comes into my mind which is very very somebody may come and tell you dola dol dopi ma that is your mantra chant <laughs> what will happen then you will start dancing also with that mantra <laughs> to so know sanctioned by our scriptures by our great rishis because it is revealed to them in the peak of meditation was revealed to them as great poten- potency great sanctity and you know that it is for this devata you have got great reverence for the devata and the kalyana guna of those devatas you are aware that you will it what you will it that will become so when say shiva shiva means we know what is shiva who is shiva we know how in our tradition it is taught to us shiva means he is shiva and shiva means always introvert a great tapasvi tyageshwara tyageshwara so all the ideas we have got about shiva or ambar ambar means oh my god so many things are said about ambar she is a mother of the universe ocean of compassion yeah all powerful she can do anything for you such a mother who is all compassionate and all powerful who can do anything for you how wonderful it is so these ideas helps the mind to other than to sink into the heart so those mantras sanctioned by the scriptures very important with that mantra we should tie this mind i tell you it is not rocket science but it requires lot of effort patience consistency you know what we want immediate result you order swi- in swiggy you order pizza pizza is delivered and you become pizza sour so after some time like that we want everything quick i want to order for moksha door delivered moksha finished 
No, sorry. Moksha cannot be door delivered. <laughs> you cannot order through your mobile. You have to work for it patiently. So therefore, it, the technique is not difficult. But we are not still ready. Or we want everything like this quick. No. That is why exploiting our weakness, the modern acharyas come and say, forget about all those traditional techniques. I am going to teach a wonderful technique. Within few weeks, you are there. Come on. We get so fascinated. But our rishis have given a very authentic path and a wonderful mantra, but we are not ready to work hard. So, whatever mantra given by our teacher is the best mantra. We have, see there are no shortcuts here. Gurudev always used to say, no shortcuts. Cut short the mind into two, that is the shortest cut he used to say. So, the mantra we should take and keep our mind in the sound of the mantra. How? Ah, for next 15 minutes, we will try to practice. You need not close your eyes and all. But sit straight, please. Not like sitting in the beach. Okay, now sit and now we are going to chant what mantra? Hmm? No, we will take one mantra of the Lord. Om Namah Shivaya. Om Namah Shivaya. A short one is better. Short one is better. Long one. Then A. Ah. Om Namah Shivaya is all right. That is short as A. Om also A. Om also A. Om also A. Om Namah Shivaya. We will take the mantra and we shall try to try, try only to keep the mind on the sound of the mantra, not on the meaning of the mantra, not on even the form of the Lord who is associated with the mantra, no. You understand what I am saying? Suppose if we chant Om Namah Shivaya, not about the Lord Shiva who is dancing, Nardana Mata Shiva, the Shiva Lamanda. Only the sound of the mantra. Okay? Om Namah Shiva.
Saturday morning very beautifully when we sit our attention should be on the posture of the body how are we seated and then when we start watching the prana how is the prana going in coming out so keeping the mind on the prana so in this technique of meditation say you are keeping the mind in one place here and now in one object meaning now the sound of the mantra not even the meaning of the mantra not even the form associated with that deity of that mantra it is just the sound of the mantra i tell you it can take you very deep it can take you very deep and to start with you can chant loudly and after some time when you mature it can be chanted softly within yourself so this is how we have to start the meditation so these are the initial adjustments and these are the general techniques hmm? so today evening we shall see further how to tame this mind because mind will not sit quiet when you want it not sit quiet because we have spoiled the mind so the mind will not listen to us while chanting it will go run away somewhere it will roam here and there it will create lot of you know doubts lot of problems it will create so today we will see in the after in the evening or in the afternoon the evening, evening satsang satsang we will see how to really go about this process of meditation so now what we have seen only the initial adjustments are you able to understand yes. my english is very simple only now yes. yeah so today even we will see how to go about this process of meditation right yes. so the third sub third uh, uh, topic what is the third topic the process of meditation how to really go about to soar high in the seat of meditation that we will see in the evening so i have i have assured you about eight topics right you remember yes. yesterday we saw why meditation why we should sit for meditation what we gain why should we meditate today now the initial adjustments and the third topic is actual process how to go about it. that we will see in the evening class the inner vision நான் சிறுசம் விளையாட்டு இதுதான் சொன்னாலும் ரொம்ப ரொம்ப என்ன சொல்கிறது சகஜமாக உங்களுக்கு புரியுறமான்னு சொன்னாலும் தீஸ் ஆர் ஆல் கிவன் பை அவர் ஷீஸ் டைம் டெஸ்டட் அண்ட் இட் இஸ் ஆல் சார்ட் ஆஃப் அப்ரூவ் பை ஆல் அவர் குரு பரம்பர் ஐ ஆம் நாட் சேங் எனிதிங் ஃப்ரம் மை ஹேட் சாரி 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 ஓம் தானே வருது ஏன் சாரி சார் ஸோ தோ i may be trying to express in a little you know jovial way or you know very very ordinary language but please don't underestimate these are all given by our great rishis and they have practiced it 
is time tested and very effective. When I was very young, when I was learning from our Swami Satyananda Maharaj, when I was in the Yuva Kendra, he taught us these <coughs> techniques. And I have practiced this for some time. And I have found it to be very, very helpful. So these are all actually tested by this sadhu also. So therefore, it is not, I am just talking out of the hat. So these are all very effective. But only thing is I am trying to help the beginners from the beginning stage onwards. So when you go a little higher and higher, you will understand it's it's still wonderful thing, you know. So therefore don't take it easily or just lightly. It's all time tested. Hmm? Om